Welcome to the Cape Cod Museum of Art annual meeting. I'm Deborah Steiger, the president of the Board of Trustees. I am here supported by Benton Jones, the director of art, and Michael Rabideau, our director of operations. First, thank you both for their leadership and your commitment, and congratulations on delivering an outstanding year. Thank you, Deb. Each of us will be presenting live from the museum. As well, we will zoom in board presenters. I will begin the presentation. Both Benton and Mike will be back at the podium to present. All right, well, thank you for your time this evening. Before we begin, a few informational points. We are broadcasting using Zoom webinar technology. Therefore, only the presenters will be heard. We welcome you to use your chat function to share your comments and questions, and we will answer questions at the end. The presentation is scheduled for approximately 45 minutes with additional time allowed for Q&A. The presenter will be minimized on the screen so the PowerPoint may be visible. We will cover the following. Introduction of the staff and the board. Highlights of the year with relevant data. We will be benchmarking 2019 since 2020 was greatly impacted due to the pandemic. Making 2019 a much more relevant comparison. We will review our 2021 financial results, share our five-year strategic plan, acknowledge our sponsors, donors, and volunteers, and provide highlights of 2022, the year ahead. And lastly, this report will be available on our website for your later viewing, ccmoa.org. So I'd like to now switch to the next slide. Thank you very much, Joyce. So our mission is the Cape Cod Museum of Art's mission is to excite and inspire the in imagination of all using exhibitions, education, and transformative cultural experiences. We share and steward our outstanding collection, loan works, and deep connection to the Cape's creative culture and heritage now and will for generations to come. That is the mission of this team. I am proud to introduce the staff that makes it happen. Each one has made remarkable contributions to the museum and I wanna express our thanks. Benton Jones, the Director of Art, Michael Rabideau, Director of Operations, Joyce Gromer, Marketing Manager, Erica Strespeck, Education and Program Manager, Yana Jones, Registrar, Susan Ostrander, Membership and Volunteer Coordinator, Nils Soderberg, Facilities Manager, and Michael Giacuento, our museum shop weekend staff. And I'd like to shout out to Joyce for her support and Frank Ostrander for helping us with this presentation today. I snuck that in, Joyce. Our 12 trustees volunteer their time, talent, and treasure. Each bring a wealth of experience and knowledge to the museum. I'm honored to serve this outstanding institution alongside the supportive group. I am Deb Steiger, as I mentioned earlier, president of the board. My term began in early 2021. Donna Hebert, our vice president. William Lord, treasurer, who will be presenting here tonight. Kim Rumberger, clerk. Kathleen Fowler, our recent past president, thank you, Kathleen, Bill Brooks, Pat Stark-Feinstein, Kenneth Hockey, Robert Portree, Chair of Strategic Planning Committee, who will also be presenting tonight, Joanne Stelma, Susan Chandler, and Maureen Callahan. Thank you. Also, I would like to acknowledge our honorary trustees. Each of these individuals have been, and many continue to be significant supporters of the museum. We recognize your contributions and express our thanks.
Our 2021 results did not happen by luck or by accident. Due to the impact of the pandemic in 2020, we formed a group of loyalists called stakeholders. 30 individuals made up of volunteers, staff, and board members, each bringing a diverse perspective, representing our members, our community, and artists. We met monthly to determine the path for 2021. What can we do? What can't we do? What risks do we face? What resources are required? This group was data informed and mission driven. And we continue this approach today. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Benton. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deborah Steiger. <laughs> Deborah has been a volunteer at the museum now for over four years. Uh, and in 2021, I'm happy to say she accepted an, her nomination to board president. It is a pleasure and an honor to take on the challenges that have come and that will come with you, Deborah. Our 40th anniversary was in 2021. It was a great year for maritime navigation metaphors as we look back at the distant horizon, reflected on where we are today, and plotted the course to a brilliant future. The theme of voyage carried us throughout the year in themed exhibitions and into our annual summer gala fundraiser. Our founder, Harry Hall, laid the groundwork for collecting and celebrating artists with a Cape Cod connection, some well known and others still yet to be discovered. Starting with a bequest of 34 works from Harry Hall's father-in-law, sculptor Arnold Geisbuehler, our permanent collection has grown in size and diversity, now numbering 2,500 fine works of art. This collection, we are held responsible to steward, developing it thoughtfully, with care, as we hold it for you and future generations to enjoy, study and celebrate in public trust. In 2021, we highlighted our outstanding collection with three exhibitions dedicated to researching and sharing this collection with the assistance of our dedicated docents. And we brought 15 new works into the permanent collection through a rigorous pro process, starting with recommendations from our acquisitions committee, comprised of artists, historians, and obtaining final acceptance from the board of directors. These work represent a diversity of artists creating in different styles, time frames, and mediums from province, Provincetown to Sandwich reflecting the artistic vision of the people who have lived, visited, and produced artworks uh, on Cape Cod, works that represent our landscapes, our people, our culture, as well as abstract works with a, with a theoretical approach. Our exhibitions are at the core of our mission, to excite and, ex and inspire the imagination of all. We curated 18 ambitious exhibitions ranging from group invitational, members juried, national juried, permanent collection exhibitions, and one-person shows. We hosted 11,000 visitors, visitors in 2021, and in comparison to the most recent normal year of 2019, we saw a 28% increase in admissions. These exhibitions provided a framework for all of our programming from classes to artist demonstrations to history lectures and other connected events. In 2021, we branded our education department as the museum school. Classes took place in our Wedney Education Center, our Harry Hall Sculpture and Pottery Studio, our 90-seat D'Alessandra Auditorium, outdoors, online, and on demand. Our classes covered a wide range of subjects that can appeal to everyone of all skill levels. In 2021, new classes included an after-school youth program that we are now expanding to Tuesdays and Wednesdays, accommodating kids from six to 15. And we're grateful in 2021 
to be able to restart our Monday weekly Alzheimer's program that was paused during the pandemic. The numbers speak volumes as we conducted nearly 100 courses serving 550 students, doubling our revenue over the 2019 benchmark. We sought out many fruitful collaborations in 2021, hosting juried exhibitions of artworks in collaboration with local art centers, inspiring our young artists on the Cape to pursue a life in the visual arts through our annual youth art exhibition, hosting the Cape Cod and Islands Art Educators Association and the Pastel Painters Society Youth Scholarship Awards. We marked our um, indigenous plantings on our, in our sculpture garden with bronze markers made by artist Kim Rumberger with funding from the um, Arts Foundation of Cape Cod. We hosted the unveiling of the Pops by the Sea artwork created by Carl Lopes. We provided a theatrical themed book release with the Cape Playhouse and installed the Plymouth 400's Native American informative display created by the local Smoke Signals Museum Display Company as part of our cartography exhibition. Our programs dovetailed seamlessly with and amongst our exhibitions, entertaining our members and guests while supporting our mission. We introduced a Summer Music and More 13 concert series under a tent we purchased and installed in our USANA Denny Sculpture Garden. This tent provided a safe and picturesque environment to enjoy an afternoon concert amongst friends and sculptures. We have been able to expand our indoor winter concert series this year, luckily, in, ad in addition to the summer concert series that we expect uh, this summer. And we anticipate to see even better numbers in 2022. Our Manja Al Museo family pasta party in 2021 needed to pivot to a live streaming program and we found a new way to enjoy a pasta meal together with our museum family and numerous guests for enter entertainment, offering some pandemic relief over Zoom and enjoying, enjoyed from the comfort of home, a gourmet dinner served in handmade ceramic bowls made by our pottery students, not to mention providing a much needed revenue boost to the museum. We highlighted our central summer exhibition cartography with a VIP reception that proved to be a delight for map lovers, mural detectives, and Native American advocates. These annual VIP receptions that accompany our most prominent yearly exhibitions have been an important way for us to give special recognition to our most generous donors. The voyage theme carried into our annual gala fundraiser. We divided the event over two consecutive Sundays for COVID safety with a silent auction summer soiree on a beautiful summer's night, featuring two bands, food, drink, and fun spread out throughout the museum and under two tents. This was followed a week later by a live online auction. Again, the numbers speak for themselves, both in dollars and the numbers of oysters consumed. Our 2021 Muse Awards went to benefactors Kathleen Sidwell and Steve Sidwell. And the Cape Cod Artist Muse Award recipient was Jack Coughlin, and he'll be having a retros retrospective exhibition scheduled for this summer. We started a new annual event at the museum, Oktoberfest. It was a true friend raiser that brought smiles to everyone's face and we kept the museum open to bring art to the many new guests that came to this event. We are able to offer accessibility to the community through a number of no fee programs. These event events included Artful Thursdays with, three, with free evening admission on the first Thursday of each month. We also had a free August adventure family event with crafts, kite making, caricature drawing, balloon tying, music. It was loads of fun. It was made possible through a grant from the Highland Street Foundation. 
We had a creative outlets program that was offered for teens on eight summer Sundays. And of course, our Monday Alzheimer's program resumed. We also opened the doors to the Dennis Holiday Stroll. I would now like to hand the podium over to Mike Rabideau, recently promoted to Director of Operations. Mike. Thank you, Benton. I've been here at the museum for just over a year now, and I can say, without doubt, it has been a whirlwind ride and an incredible learning experience. And with that said, I'll be reviewing for you today the many back of house aspects of the museum, which are critical to the success seen in the front of house. Let's start with a review of our members and volunteers. They are, in fact, the lifeblood of our museum, and without them, we could never accomplish our program of work. I'm extremely proud to say that in 2021, and in spite of the many challenges COVID presented, more than 55 generous volunteers donated over 4,300 hours of their time to the museum. From the front desk and museum staff to event planning and education, from our core of docents to our exhibition installers, and even our garden group that helps keep the grounds and front entrance looking beautiful year round, I can say confidently, thank you. We could not do it without your help. Additionally, in 2021, our membership increased by 350 households, bringing, bringing our membership count to approximately 1,300 individuals by way of over 900 accounts. That's a remarkable 41% increase over 2019 levels. Our building, well, it's now approaching 40 years, and with that comes the challenges of maintaining and repairing systems designed, in some cases, to last for 25 or 30 years. There were several significant projects that were completed in 2021, designed to protect our structure and aid us in advancing our mission of protecting and preserving our collection and delivering engaging educational experiences to our audience. First, we invested in fiber optic internet by partnering with OpenCAPE to significantly increase bandwidth and upload and download speeds. You're enjoying the fruits of that investment now as you participate in this annual meeting broadcast over the internet. Second was the reconstruction of our Wenny Education Center entrance to enhance educational opportunities and gain greater usefulness and also repair much needed drainage issues. Third, we embarked on a project to replace much of the rotted trim and, and to paint the trim surfaces that surround the exterior of the building. Finally, the museum invested in a 600 square foot frame tent, which was erected in the sculpture garden from June through October, enabling, enabling us to move forward with outdoor programming in spite of COVID issues and to play host to our inaugural summer music series, music and more series, as well as our auction, group meetings, classes, and lectures. As we'll see in a moment, contributed support or donations are, are a critical component of the revenue puzzle. We generate support through general donations, via outreach through appeals, grants, and sponsorships. This past year, we staged two appeal campaigns, one in the spring and one in the late fall. Combined, they raised over $75,000, an increase of nearly 25% over 2019's levels. Giving throughout the year came from over 442 donors, and we were able to secure $16,500 in sponsorships to events and exhibitions. And here's a quick look at the many cash and kind and in kind sponsors from 2021, including the Cape Cod Foundation, the Mass Cultural Council, the Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod, the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod, Joseph Carr, 
and many more, as you can see. We also received substantial funding from 14 grants totaling over $171,000. And these came from small towns to as large as the United States Small Business Administration. Our museum shop, it was the little engine that could generating over $120,000 in sales and represented a 25% increase over 2019 levels. What's noteworthy here is that our shop features the work of 113 local artists and artisans, and we were able to give back $70,000 in consignment payments to that community. Of course, none of it would have been possible without the volunteers of the museum shop who, who donated more than a thousand hours of their time to our cause. Finally, this past year, we revisioned our lower level into what we have dubbed the collector's corridor. Here we feature works of art for sale. The criteria being all works must have been previously exhibited in one of our exhibitions and juried in one of those shows. And as you can see here, in 2021, we generated $21,000 in sales and paid commissions back to 50 local artists who participate in the collector's corridor. So how does it all fit together? As you can see in the pie chart on the left, operating income was $813,000. It's important to note just how important contributed support, otherwise known as donations, grants, and events are to the funding equation that feeds our mission of program and work. Combined, those three categories account for 65% of our total revenue. Expenses totaled nearly $700,000. And like many businesses, personnel exp expenses make up nearly, nearly one half of our total costs. General facilities maintenance also accounted for 12%. Education expenses were 9%. And events cost us about 6% of our total expenditures. The balance of the 27, the balance, which is 27%, as you can see, consists of miscellaneous general and administrative costs, which include things like insurance, putting on exhibitions, technology, leases, commissions to artists, and printings and mailings. And with that said, I'd now like to turn it over to our board treasurer, Bill Lord, who will speak to the overall health and condition here at the museum. Well, thank you very much, Mike. As I said, I'm Bill Lord. I'm the uh, treasurer and trustee of the museum. I'm pleased to report that the financial condition continues to improve and is on a solid footing for 2022. Total unrestricted funds increased during the year from 2.4 million to 2.7 million, while total equity, which is assets minus liabilities, increased from 3.1 million to 3.6 million. Liabilities currently total only 23,000. Most of the financial assets are invested in portfolios at TD Ameritrade under the guidance of an independent professional investment advisor and the finance committee of the museum. The portfolios are invested in broad-based funds that are geared to produce a return on investment of approximately 5 to 7% per year long term, with a mix of approximately 50% equity investments and 50% fixed income investments. This asset allocation is designed to provide stability in the portfolios and growth for the future. The investment policy is to withdraw 1% per quarter from the $250,000 of restricted endowment funds. The museum is also the recipient of an annual income distrib distribution from a $200,000 bequest held at the Cape Cod Foundation 
from a bequest from a former member of the museum. During the pandemic, the museum was the recipient of two loans from the federal government, which have since been forgiven, so we have no outstanding obligation to repay those loans. The Finance Committee works closely with the Buildings and Grounds Committee to provide adequate funding for the various equipment upgrades and replacements and building improvements previously approved by the Board of Trustees. The projects are, projects are selected based on the need to preserve and protect our art collection, to improve the visitor experience, and to provide the technology for online classes, exhibits, and events in today's uncertain world of in-person events. In conclusion, the museum is well-funded to meet the financial needs of the museum for 2022 and the foreseeable future. It is now my pleasure to introduce Robert Portry, a longtime trustee and chairman of the Strategic Planning Committee. Bob, take it away. Hey, thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. And once again, the uh, miracle of Zoom allows me to do this meeting from Florida uh, and feel like I'm right there with everybody else, which is tremendous. Earlier, uh, Benton talked about our theme this year of a voyage. And what I wanted to mention was that uh, this voyage for the Strategic Planning Committee started in 2017. Uh, a small group of us got together at Kathleen Fowler's office and put together our first strategic plan uh, that was aspirational. And uh, over the next several years, we worked it. And uh, I think we were a little piece of what happened in, at the museum. Uh, but all credit goes to every staff member, uh, every member themselves, the board and, and as a whole, or the strategic plan would never come together. Uh, now, uh, Deb mentioned earlier that the strategic plan had a mission, uh, and with that mission comes a vision. And from a vision perspective, um, we really said that we want the Cape Cod Museum of Art from an aspirational perspective to be as the, the best possible museum of art on the Cape as possible. Uh, and that in doing that, we really wanted to preserve the character of the art that's done here and the diversity of that art. And we wanted to be able to share that with everybody in the region. And to do that, we really looked at the permanent collection as one of the key components of our strategic plan. And as things that we think that are going to make a difference to us, being able to digitize our collection so that people don't always have to be at the museum. They can go online and they can see the works of art and they can call up the art piece they want to see uh, and the history behind them. So we think that's exciting to be able to do. Uh, we, we're really looking at uh, broadening the diversity of our collection as we recognize the change and evolution of who lives on the Cape and who works on the Cape. So we see a lot with that with the permanent collection, but one of the things that I thought was important with this uh, strategic plan this year was that we built frameworks as a plan and we gave it to the staff to actually build out the infrastructure of that plan. And they'll do that over the next few years. Uh, and that we think makes a difference in that when we put this strategic plan together this year, we had uh, folks that were part of the staff with us. We had some trustees with us. We had just, we had members with us. Uh, and it really brought, brought together a very robust team to put together a framework of which the uh, permanent collection was a piece. Uh, education, uh, as you can see from Benton's presentation, we have done a lot in education this year. And it's only the start. We've hired uh, somebody that's our new education coordinator, Erica, we're extremely excited about. Uh, and we're going to continue to focus on education and expand its reach and depth uh, in our community. Uh, as, as Bill said, and as Mike said, uh, development is really the foundation of our museum. Uh, we need to recognize, and we do, that. Uh, our membership 
and our donors are the lifeblood of the museum. And we are continuing to work on doing a more and more professional job every day with, with our work with our, with our members and donors in development. We are looking for diverse uh, abilities. You saw what we did with sponsors this year, and what we did with grants. Um, we're scratching the surface. We're going to continue to work that, and we're excited about it. Um, Mike talked about the building and grounds and the tactical aspect of it, you know, painting and, and putting in new doors and steps. Uh, but we see a vision over time of reimagining the entrance to the museum and being able to uh, add an ac access to the museum shop from the side of the building where the street comes up. So people won't have to go working their way through the museum to get into the shop. So there's a lot in that area from a from an aspirational aspect uh, as we move ahead. Uh, and finally, uh, with our plan personnel, um, uh, as you see, we've got a robust staff. And it's very, very well grounded. Uh, Benton does a tremendous job, has been for years. And then we've got Mike, who's been here just a year and is now running at 100 miles an hour all the time. Uh, we're very excited about our staff uh, and trying to continue to grow the staff to make sure our volunteer program continues to expand. Uh, we had two interns last summer. We want to continue that and grow it because we think that's a, a, a linkage to universities and, a link, and also a linkage to young professionals. And uh, our goal really is to have a robust, strong personnel plan as part of our strategic plan. We're excited about it. Uh, we want to partner with everybody in the community to effectuate this plan. Uh, and we see uh, great things happening as, as we move ahead. And if I remember correctly, I turn this back over to Ben. Yes, thank you very much, Bob. That was great. Um, so we've heard a lot today about where we have been in 2021. And I'd like to take a little look ahead to the future. So as you have seen, uh, there are so many initiatives we have to build on. Uh, and the upcoming summer exhibition titled Donald Stoltenberg Building His World echoes this and will be an exhibition that celebrates the life of, of a prolific Brewster painter who focused on the great achievements of man-made structures. <clears throat> he, he did paintings from buildings to planes to ships to bridges. And as of this Monday, with a delivery of artwork to the Cape Cod Museum of Art, we now have the most comprehensive collection of paintings by this master artist many of which will be on view for the very first time on July, beginning on July 6th. This exhibition will be curated by respected art historian, Deborah Foreman, and accompanied by a catalog and a VIP reception. Also, we have an inaugural Cape Cod Outdoor Sculpture Invitational Exhibition. This will run from June through October. This exhibition is in collaboration with the New England Sculpture Association and made possible in part from a grant from the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod. It is a campus-wide exhibition on the Cape Cod Center for the Arts, the 22-acre campus we sit on, with 25 outdoor sculptures, with hopes that it will become a traditional campus exhibition. Thanks to the successful fall fundraising campaign and a matching, and a matching grant from the Mass Cultural Council, we will be upgrading our age, aged HVAC system and we'll also be installing a generator in 2022. These upgrades will not only make you more comfortable in the museum, but will ensure we can keep our permanent collection permanent. And this is all thanks to you, the donors who matched the Mass Cultural Council's challenge. In part due to the pandemic and the need to find new ways to connect, we have successfully, successfully applied for a matching grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Sciences to begin the process of digitizing our permanent collection with state-of-the-art photography equipment, as Bob was mentioning. If we can su successfully match this grant, the work here is always ongoing and challenging, but it's also so rewarding. So we're, we're going to be relying on you to match this grant 
And if, you, if we can achieve that, which I know we will, then we'll have the capacity to provide to the public a public-facing portal via the internet, providing global access to our collection with no social or economic boundaries. This achievement will result in the many other positive outcomes and possibilities. We would like to continue to grow our education department and expand our development capabilities. Our events will be bigger and better with our virtual Manja event on April 9th, our annual summer auction gala dubbed Cosmic Confetti scheduled for August 6th, the Oktoberfest, which will be our second Oktoberfest on October 1st, and our winter and summer music and more series already ongoing, the winter one. All of these ambitious plans are made possible because of you. Your donations provide the fuel to accomplish everything we do. This is a grassroots movement that makes me proud to work here. I enjoy personally thanking you for your contributions on your thank you letters. From members to guests, to artists and art, appreciation, art appreciators, your donations keep coming in and I would like to thank you so very much. So at this time, I would like to take your questions. Um, all of us can take your questions. Um, and we'll see what uh, has come in already through the chat function. Oh, OK, there's, there's one here. And it's directed to Deb. Great. Great. Oh, hey, there I am. Hi. OK, the, the question that came in is, um, what do you attribute the success of the museum shop? So um, I'm going to answer that with also another question that came in about uh, how our financial outlook is for 2022. So um, we understand that the engagement is critical. So the museum shop, the product that we offer, whether it's in an exhibition form or in a museum shop, is really the inspiring and the engagement that we need. And that's what drives traffic. Um, and that's what we anticipate for the museum shop's growth is to continue to get the right product and is we bring in more people into the museum more members more visitors with what we have to offer the shop will also um, benefit um, and as far as the financial outlook is concerned as bill told you our financial um, outlook is very strong and however it is our job to continue to engage okay get the product right and with that we would develop more members we would encourage and engage more contributions because you want to be a part so we take that seriously that it that is our our job here to continue on our mission and that will drive 2022 because as you heard from benton we are loaded with um, exciting exhibitions education programming so Thank you. Um, another question that um, I saw, Benton, um, I think this one's for you, uh, about digitizing the collection. What does this mean? So I'm going to give yes, you the so, stand. <laughs> great, great. It is a, a complex uh, and very exciting endeavor that we're uh, undertaking. Uh, we uh, partnered with a company, Digital Acuity, who uh, works with some incredible institutions uh, throughout the country, the Getty, Harvard Museums, uh, Cornell University. And it's an a incredible camera called Phase One Camera that they use. Uh, each image uh, will have the quality of 300 mega, megabytes, uh, each file with great color field depth. So there's a lot of technical uh, um, aspects to the, the process of capturing these images. Uh, we want to do it once, and we want to do it once uh, correctly. Uh, the uh, 
you know, the benefits from doing this are um, many fold. Uh, there are other institutions that don't know what we have in our permanent collection. Uh, so there's a, a possibility that uh, we might be uh, have get requests for loaning artworks. Uh, there's also archival uh, benefits. We'll have a record from a, a consistent spot in time of what our permanent collection looks like. So 100 years from now, when a conservator wants to see uh, how an object is aging or uh, hopefully not uh, degrading, they will have a benchmark to refer back to. Uh, it's a great insurance policy uh, for uh, having our permanent collection in a, in a permanent uh, storage, which will be in three different locations, so it will never be lost. Uh, and also, it's important to know that, that by doing this, our permanent collection is going to be available to everyone around the world, and there will be no boundaries as long as you have a, a cell phone uh, or some way of getting on the internet. You, so there will be no so, social uh, economic boundaries that will prevent anyone from uh, seeing the artwork that we have in our incredible collection. Okay. Okay, so there is a question about what plans are in place to continue the pottery program. Okay, well, we have, as we mentioned, the Manja Al Museo uh, uh, event, which was started by our pottery students. We've had an incredible history here of pottery at the museum, starting with Harry Hall, our museum's founder, who was a potter. So we have a dedicated pottery studio, the Harry Hall Sculpture and Clay Studio, and we are uh, dedicated to continuing our, uh, our classes here. We have uh, just recently put into place uh, a, a new instructor, and we, we hope to have several instructors uh, in the pottery studio uh, in the upcoming months and during the summer and into the fall. Um, we are in a bit of a transition stage right now in our pottery program, but I think all of the students with all of the, uh, with all of the pottery community on the Cape are working together to uh, make sure we have the right instructors and, uh, and that our program is going to be state of the art on Cape Cod. I might want to mention that we currently have an exhibition in place the, um, from the Cape Cod Potters, and that exhibition um, is by the, the group, the Cape Cod Potters, that was started 50 years ago by the same founder as our museum, Harry Hall. And so not only do we uh, take pottery seriously here at the museum, um, we also celebrate the contemporary potters and uh, and you can come to the museum and, and see some of the amazing work that they're doing. Okay. Uh, Mike is going to field the next question. Okay, folks, I have a question here. Uh, are you going to continue with the mask mandate? And uh, the Simple answer is uh, we are going to continue to remain nimble and adapt to current situations. They obviously continue to change from uh, day to day, week to week, month to month. Uh, I think it's been our success uh, that we have been able to uh, be flexible and uh, create programming that allows us to ensure that our visitors, our staff, and everyone who's associated with the museum continues to be safe. So with that said, we continue to follow state and federal guidelines, interpret them, and uh, be creative in continuing our program of work. There's also a question here, uh, is the auction going to be live or online this year? I think Benton might have touched on that um, during his presentation, but this year's auction will, we are glad to say, will be back to a live and in-person format. 
Uh, the auction itself will not be uh, a digital um, online, online only program. It will be live and in person under our giant tent in the front yard, our smaller tent in the backyard with lots of food and festivities for all. And uh, we are excited to be able to welcome, I think we're hoping for 200 guests or so. And uh, we have lots of fantastic artwork, which we'll be auctioning off in person as well as our silent auction. So, Deb, you have anything else? Would you like to? No other questions. No other questions? You want to say goodbye to everyone? Yeah, why, don't we all, or, why don't we all get up here? I, I just, I think we should um, mention the program that's coming up the event most uh, currently, um, and that's our Manja Al Museo uh, event. So we have this will be uh, a Zoom event, but everybody, if you don't know the program, gets to pick a bowl made by the pottery students right here at the Cape Cod Museum of Art. Examples, only examples. <laughs> right. And they uh, will also uh, have the opportunity to pick up some bread and some dessert, wonderful penne pasta, a marinara sauce, and Josh wine. The marinara sauce is, is by the Underground Bakery. Uh, there's going to be uh, some uh, auction items over Zoom, one by Sam Barber. We visited him today, and he uh, has uh, made a contribution of an incredible scene from Venice that we'll be auctioning off. Uh, there's another auction item of catering from of, Angela. Right, right. So there's it's going to be a, a lot of fun. There's music. There's uh, um, there's going to be a, a cooking demonstration by the Underground Bakery. We'll be invited into Josh's home to have a wine Joe, tasting. Joe Carr's home. Right, Joe's, right Josh Wine, <laughs> Joseph right. Carr's home. And, uh, and so it's just going to be a great event. So you can you know, visit us on our website. The tickets will be uh, for sale next week. Um, again, the event will be on uh, April 9th. So with that, I would like to you know, thank you for your interest uh, in the Cape Cod Museum of Art by joining us for our annual 2021 meeting today. Um, please refer to our website, www.ccmoa.org for event information. Uh, and you can also sign up for our newsletter. And of course, you can make a donation through our website. So be well, and I'll see you at the museum. Thank you so much.